Okay, so now let's get into the structure of the skin. Um, we're going to do the epidermis first, and then we will pick up the dermis, okay? So the epidermis is, of course, the outer layer, epi, upon the dermis. And it is actually, look, even in the thickest skin, oops, sorry, even in the thickest skin, it is thinner than the dermis. The dermis is thicker than the epidermis, even in the thickest skin. Um, so it's um, avascular, meaning because it's an epithelial tissue, a typical covering and lining epithelial tissue, if you took a cross-section, you are not going to see blood vessels going through it. It is um, avascular, but it has nerve endings that come up to the bottom of it, but they actually don't go into it. So let's look at just the epidermis more closely. So this picture is just showing you the epidermis. You can see the dermis in the bottom there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build the epidermis the way that it is built. So the oldest cells, the first cells start from here. I'm sorry, the newest cells start from here and the oldest cells are up here. So what we are going to do is we're going to start from the bottom, which is the stratum basale and then we're going to move up to the stratum corneum. These cells are going to be the cells that give rise to these, and then these are going to be the oldest cells that will actually be sloughed off eventually. So let's talk about this. So the bottom most layer um, close to or forming the basal surface of this epithelial tissue is called the stratum basale. The word stratum means layer, plural is strata. So typically speaking, when you're looking at this, it's going to have one, this is the stratum basale, two, stratum spinosum, three, stratum granulosum, sometimes visible stratum lucidum, and then stratum corneum. So these are the um, five layers, usually five, sometimes you can't see the stratum lucidum, of the epidermis. Now, if we're talking about the integument, there's two layers, the deeper dermis and then the superficial epidermis. But if we're talking about the epidermis, there are five layers usually. So let's talk about each of these. So the stratum basale down at the bottom is the deepest layer of the epidermis and it's attached to the dermis by the basement membrane, right? So the basement membrane would be right here. It's not actually labeled. And um, remember that um, you have hemidesmosomes, and hemidesmosomes, also not shown here, are the little spot welds in which um, the um, cells in the basal layer will actually weave into the deeper connective tissue. So it's basically got this adhesive, which is the basement membrane, and then spot welds every once in a while. Okay, so what actually makes this up? It has basically a single layer um, of cells. They look columnar. This tissue is not called columnar, but they look like columnar cells, sometimes almost like cuboidal cells. Um, and these cells are either called basal cells or keratinocytes. So let's look at them a little more closely. So these cells that you have right here, Those cells are called basal cells or keratinocytes. And then there are other cells that are actually mixed in. You're going to have two more so kinds that we'll find in there. Um, you are going to have these guys, which are called tactile cells, or sometimes Merkel cells. And you're going to have these guys, which are called melanocytes. So before we get into the tactile or melanocytes, let's look at the keratinocytes in um, detail. So these keratinocytes, also called um, basal cells, because they're in the basal layer, um, are going to be held together laterally by desmosomes. And that's kind of what they're trying to show you here. Oops, that's too big. Hold on. Let me make that a little smaller. That's as small as I can get. Okay, so um, these little connections that they're trying to show between the cells, if you blow this up or look at it in your textbook. Um, those are desmosomes, and that actually ends up being relatively important because um, when the cells actually are born, um, 
They are all sort of stuck together in a cohort. So this whole layer right here is stuck together in a cohort. And then they're going to go through cell division and they're going to move up together and they're going to continue moving up to the top until eventually they're going to be exfoliated off. But the desmosomes hold on really well, so they don't usually fall off individually. And I'll come back to that in just a second. So basically what's going to happen is um, they actually all form at the bottom and then they start moving up toward the top, okay? And they're undergoing continuous cell division, mitosis, they multiply relatively rapidly. As the new cells form underneath, the older cells are pushed upward and eventually they're going to die. And then what happens is this division, the cell division will slow with aging. So you're not going to be making as many new cells, but exfoliation has nothing to do with cell division. So if you're not replacing them and you're exfoliating them off the top, what will happen is your skin, your epidermis, specifically right here, will thin as you age. And so skin gets much thinner as you age and the dermis gets thinner as well. And the skin is easier to tear as you age. So as the cells get pulled pushed up, eventually they will start producing the waterproofing protein keratin. They do not produce it when they are in the bottom layer, but eventually when they get right about here, they're going to really start producing keratin. Um, by the time the oldest cells reach the surface, they're just dead. They've produced keratin and it's basically all of the other organelles or all of the organelles have died off there and they've produced keratin. And they're kind of just a bag of waterproofing protein that's layered on top of another bag of waterproofing protein. This process from the bottom, the stratum basale to the top, when they're dead keratinocytes, takes about 30 days. So the exfoliation, new cell to exfoliation process is about 30 days and then you slough them off. So you're basically getting um, pretty much a new epidermis about every 30 days. And in your lifetime, you will actually slough off about 18 pounds of skin. Most of it's in your house as dust. dust. So what is dandruff? Dandruff is when some people have a predisposition to the rate of keratinization and therefore exfoliation that's about two to three times the normal rate. It doesn't really mean anything about hygiene at all. It just means the rate of keratinization and shedding is about two to three times the normal rate. Now, if you have dark hair like I do, you're going to be able to see it more. In addition, hygiene can exacerbate the, um, the dandruff just because if you don't wash very regularly, then you're going to have more sloughing off um, when you're not in the shower. So you will see quite a bit of dandruff. So it doesn't have anything to do with hygiene, but not washing regularly will make it slough off more when you're not in the shower. Okay, so now we're going to meet our first kind of cancer. And the first kind of skin cancer that we're going to run into is in these basal cells where it occurs. They have a really fast rate of cell division. So it's not at all surprising that one of the cancers occurs there. And it's called basal cell carcinoma. And basal cell carcinoma, your textbook has this picture of it. And that's all well and good, but that's way later. Like you would probably notice that because it looks like a booger on your skin but it actually starts out looking more like this, which um, doesn't cause as much alarm and people can let it go for a little further. So basal cell carcinoma occurs when the basal cells or keratinocytes undergo uncontrolled mitosis. This is the most common type of skin cancer. It all is also the least likely to metastasize into other tissues. Um, I'm not saying it can't be deadly. All cancers can be deadly, but between these three types of skin cancer that we're going to learn, this is the one that is most likely to have a full cure by surgical excision. When it starts out, it's usually relatively shiny and dome-shaped, but then in later stages, it um, will, it starts out as a shiny elevation, and then eventually it will become a central depression. These occur really commonly on the face, especially in people that don't wear sunscreen or don't wear makeup. 
They can also occur on the head when someone is balding, um, sometimes on the hands and women sometimes here, every place that you get a lot of sun exposure. And that is our first one, which is basal cell carcinoma. Okay, so also present in this layer are two other kinds of cells. This guy right here is called a tactile cell or a Merkel cell. And this is the first most superficial of your sensory receptors. So here's a sensory nerve ending and here's the tactile cell that's associated with it. What it does is it actually is a sensory receptor. Um, you can't feel anything in your epidermis until something actually stimulates the bottom layer, which is why, I don't know if you guys did this when you were a kid, did you ever stick straight pins in and try to scare your siblings? It doesn't hurt unless you go pretty deep. How deep is pretty deep? All the way down to the bottom layer of the epidermis, or if you get it into the dermis, there's tons of nerve endings in there. So um, these are tactile or Merkel cells. And then um, next we will talk about melanocytes and skin colors. So I'm going to, and melanoma, I'm going to put that in the next video.